good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world, and that's not plagiarized. I'm here today with a very special guest, my beautiful wife, and we are here to react to a highly requested video, How the Dutch Conquer Land That Doesn't Exist. You might know a little bit about this already from what I've told you. Yeah, a little bit. So let's just dive into it. I want you to take a look at this map of the Netherlands. It's from the 1300s and it shows exactly how big the Netherlands was at that time. What's interesting is that rising sea levels should have caused this country to shrink by around 65% in size from what you see on this map. So here's a map that shows what that would look like. But interestingly, this is not what happened. If we fast forward 7 centuries and look at a map of the Netherlands today, it hasn't shrunk in size. Instead, it's grown in size by 17%. So what happened? Well, obviously they didn't go the traditional route by annexing land from Belgium or Germany, the only two neighboring countries to the Netherlands. Instead, they created new land and somehow saved all the land below sea level from disappearing into the ocean. So I had to figure out how they did this. But on that journey, I found out that the Dutch war with the ocean explains so much about the Netherlands, its culture, history, and why it turned out to be the country it is today. I mean, have you ever wondered why there are windmills in the Netherlands? Why there are dams in Amsterdam? Or why pretty much all tulips in the world come from here? Well, turns out all of these things can be traced back to the Dutch war with the ocean. So what better place to start than the iconic windmills that you see everywhere in the Netherlands? Now, you might be under the impression that these windmills have one purpose, milling wheat. But these engineering marbles were the cornerstone in the wall with the ocean. You see, their main purpose wasn't to mill wheat, but instead to pump out water from one place to another. I'll be honest, I didn't know that that's what the purpose of windmills were prior to watching <laughs> this video. I didn't know either. <laughs> Those windmills are so cool though, right? Yeah, they are. They look so interesting. <laughs> okay. Which is a key part in how the Dutch create new land. And the way it works is they begin by sectioning off the area they want to reclaim by making these barriers, also known as dikes. Then they would build- Yay, advertisements. You should really turn on the ad blocker. I should turn on the ad blocker windmills on top of these dikes that could draw the energy from the wind and use that to drain the water out of the enclosed area into the ocean, creating patches of land that lie beneath sea level. These are called polders. It seems simple, but the ingenuity of this method simply can't be understated. You will have to remember they began using this method in the 1300s, and therefore they had none of the technology we have today. So, to accomplish their goals of beating the ocean, getting their land back, and saving their country from drowning, they had to come up with something brilliant, and windmills were the answer. And while windmills aren't necessary today, the Netherlands still has around 1,000 of them scattered around the country. And even though they've gone on to use much more sophisticated methods to drain water, the windmills are left as symbols that represent the long history of Dutch dominance over the ocean. But wait a second, what do they use this reclaimed land for? Considering draining out seawater from an area will leave you with land that is made up of sand, salt and clay which isn't the type of soil you typically want to use for anything useful like, say, farmland. So what do they use it for? Well, despite the composition of the soil not being suited for traditional farming, the Dutch have found a way to use this type of soil to their advantage. You see, it turns out that the seabed soil, with a mix of rain, sunshine and clever crop rotation, eventually becomes extremely fertile, to one crop in particular, and that crop is flowers most notably tulips. And since the Netherlands has numerous patches of land with this soil due to their land reclamation, flowers are big business in the Netherlands. In fact, their tulip exports account for 80% of the world's supply. Just think about that. 80% of the world's supply of tulips comes from one country, the Netherlands. There is simply no other place on earth where the conditions for growing tulips are even close to being as good as the Netherlands. I mean, no wonder, it's the only country with such vast acreage of reclaimed land. Except for China, of course, but they use different methods to gain new land. <coughs> but hang on a second. 
If you look closely at these fields, you'll see that most of them are covered in grass, not flowers. And when I first saw that, I became quite curious. I mean, why aren't they growing flowers on all of the fields, or maybe another crop that is actually useful, instead of plain old grass? Well, I found the reason, and it's cheese. Let me explain. You see, whilst flowers are certainly the most obvious crop choice for these farmlands, there is simply too much land available to grow them on. And since the Dutch already represent 80% of the world's supply of, say, tulips, the supply would far exceed demand had they grown them on all of their polders, which in turn would create incredibly low prices, making it unprofitable to grow tulips and flowers for the Dutch. So something else had to be grown here, and as you might remember, not isn't that such an interesting picture to see the, the fields of different colors? Yeah, it's awesome. Not that many crops like this type of soil, so grass was pretty much the only option. But obviously, grass can't really be consumed by humans, and therefore isn't <laughs> is that this? desirable to any of us. So, in order to make use of the grass in a profitable way, the Dutch put cows here that would be happy to yeah. eat it and turn it into milk. The only problem is that milk expires quickly and isn't particularly profitable. So, in order to combat this, the Dutch began turning the milk into cheese, a product that lasts longer and has a higher selling price. This is where Hauda came into the picture, a beautiful Dutch cheese that is recognized by its sweetness and creaminess all over the is world. That how you're and it quickly to say became that? one of the best selling. What? In the US, we say Gouda. How do you say it? <laughs> he said Hauda. This is where Hauda came into the picture, Hauda. a hmm. beautiful Dutch cheese what? that is recognized by its sweetness and creaminess all over the world. And it quickly became one of the best-selling cheeses, making it a highly profitable product for the Dutch, which is exactly what they were going for. So, because of the extensive land reclamation the Netherlands has done over the years, they discovered <laughs> the two most lucrative export categories, dairy products and flowers, by necessity. And that's truly incredible and it shows the ingenuity of the Dutch. But the Netherlands is home to more than just tulips and cheese. Let's not forget about dikes. Lots and lots of dikes. The Dutch take dikes seriously. And no wonder. They are the only thing that keeps the 65% of the land that lies beneath sea level from drowning. Therefore, these dikes are no joke. Look at this. It's trying to sell me Viagra. <laughs> I didn't even notice what the ad was in <laughs> Thick layer of clay in order to provide waterproofing the and resistance watch. against erosion. Because of the videos I watch. <laughs> <laughs> You're an old man. <laughs> the crushed rock below the waterline is added to slow wave action. And then all the way from the bottom up to above the waterline, the dike is often covered with carefully laid basalt stones or a layer of tarmac. It's literally a fortress placed in the ocean in the shape of a line. It's insane the lengths they go to in order to protect their land. And I haven't even told you the most ridiculous thing about these dikes yet. You see, the grass that is on top of these dikes is maintained by sheep, not humans. The reason is that sheep keep the grass dense and, most importantly, compress the soil while walking around the dike. I mean, only the Dutch would come up with something as ridiculous as that. But hey, who am I to judge? They've been defeating the ocean now for multiple centuries and I'm still scared of swimming at the beach. They know what they're doing. And that's especially true when they created this, the Closure Dike, 90 years ago. It's insane. Just look at it. It's 32 kilometers long and it turned this massive inlet of the North Sea into a freshwater lake. But wait, hold on a second. How did it become a freshwater lake? Shouldn't it be a saltwater lake, considering it was previously part of the ocean? Well, yes, under normal circumstances it would stay as a saltwater lake, but Lake Igisul, as it's called today, is connected to a river of the same name. And over time, this river has repleted the lake with fresh water, and if you combine that with the fact that the Dutch continuously pump out salt water, you'll eventually end up with a freshwater lake. It's honestly pretty unbelievable. 
And while there are some major environmental concerns by doing something like this, the fact is they've protected this area from floodings for almost 9 decades now. So it's probably fair to say that it was entirely worth it to them. Especially when you take Flevoland into consideration. An artificial island that's literally the size of Luxembourg. More fascinating though is the fact that it didn't exist 35 years ago. Yet more than 400,000 people live here. Imagine living on land that really shouldn't exist. I mean, it's kind of weird to think about. Although I'm sure the Dutch don't really think about it. Considering they've dominated the ocean for so long, and it's so closely tied to their history. Even their capital city shows major signs of ocean exploitation. Do you see all these routes? Yeah, that's canals. And all of them were created artificially by the Dutch. Why? Well, it's honestly pretty genius. Not only could they use it to easily transport goods as well as people to and from Amsterdam, but also inside of it. Something that was- Oh. I was curious. He just left a little teaser and then didn't explain it. Yeah, he like left a little cliffhanger. Well, I am gonna check out the Delta Works soon. I don't know if that's one of the videos on the agenda for today, but maybe we can watch it together. Yeah. That's really cool. I love seeing how like the windmills like and everything like all work together like in their ex their main exports. Like that's crazy. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. I always like hear about people joking about the amount of windmills in uh, Amsterdam and, and the Netherlands and mm -hmm. the windmills are like a staple of the Netherlands. Yeah, I just I didn't even know like the history. That's crazy. It's awesome. The Dutch have mastered manipulating the water. That's very interesting. 1300? Since the 1300s, yeah, that's, that's wild. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this video. Check out the channel for some more videos about the Netherlands or other countries. Or let us know where you're from and comment down below what we should check out from your country. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great day. Hey there, and thank you for tuning in today. I started the Localia project for my passion of connections, community, and culture. I don't know where exactly we're going to take this channel yet, um, but I'd love to find out together. If you like what you see, hit the like and subscribe. You can also go to patreon.com backslash Localia, where you can get full-length vlogs, behind-the-scenes, deleted scenes, and you can even have a say in what videos we do next. Thank you so much.